Number seven ministries. The spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news. Hello, welcome to Number Seven Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called Round and Round We Go. In Exodus chapter 13, verse 17, when Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them on the road through the Philistine country, though that was shorter. For God said if they face war, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 2, normally it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea, going by the way of Mount Seir. Basically, if you calculate 11 days from Mount Sinai to Kadesh, you can take that same measurement and calculation and equate it to Egypt, where they were slaves, to the Promised Land and Jericho, and you can come up with approximately three weeks. They, a month at the, three to four weeks, approximately. There's no way that it would have taken them 40 years. The reason why God allowed them to travel in the desert 40 years is because they had no faith. They had no trust in God and they were rebellious against God and the leader, Moses and Aaron, the people that God appointed to lead them out of slavery. And they had no excuse for this at all. And the reason why I say they had no excuse because God proved himself with multiple plagues before they got to the point where they started doubting God and complaining. Because before they left slavery in the first place, God produced plague after plague after plague and spared all the babies of the Israelites, but destroyed all the babies of the Egyptians. How could you ever call that a coincidence? How could you ever doubt God, allowed the entire Red Sea to turn to blood? What more do you need to see before you start trusting God? Had the entire Red Sea split open so that they can pass through and destroy all of Pharaoh's army? What more do you need? And my question is to, to the church of 2012, to the Christians walking around, what does all this have to do with today's time? It's this, the principles remain the same. Even though the stories were uh, years and years ago, in 2012, the Bible still applies to our life. My question is, is has God proven himself to you over and over and over again, but you still don't trust him? See, you could be like the Israelite who's traveling round and round and round. You might feel like your life is not going anywhere. You're not being promoted. You feel like you're stuck in the mud. My question is, why is that happening? Can God not deliver you out of a situation? Can not God not deliver you out of poverty? Can God not promote you into another situation? Yes, he can. But the reason why you're in your situation is because there are lessons for us to learn as a Christian. So don't complain, don't cry, just trust God that he has a reason why he's doing that. And also it's said that God didn't lead them straight there because there was a battle. There were the Philistines, the giants, and if they would have saw them, they would have flipped out, they would have lost heart, they would have lost faith, they'd have been so fearful that they wouldn't even traveled around 40 years in the desert, they would have went straight back to slavery. And so as a Christian, are there situations that are possible to overtake us and to cause us to be so fearful that it will bring us back into addictions? It will bring us back into alcoholism. It will bring us back into lust and perversion. It will bring us back into trusting money more than God. Yes, there is. And God is not going to present that situation to us if we're not yet prepared. He's going to avoid the situation so that we can still have opportunities to build up our faith. In Numbers chapter 14, verse 1, now all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the, and the people wept that night. All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation. I want to emphasize on that. Not just a few people, not even just 10%. The whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, 
or would it or that we died in the wilderness why is the lord bringing us into the land to fall by the sword our wives and our little ones will be become plunder would it not be better for us to return to egypt so they said to one another let us appoint a leader and return to egypt then moses and aaron fell on the faces in the presence of all the assembly of the congregation and the sons of Israel. Look at this. After they gave all that complaining, all that lack of faith, all that doubt, all that criticism against Moses. Look how Moses replied. The heart, we really got to emphasize and give credit where credit's due. God really gave Moses a heart of faith and love for the people. Because instead of Moses rebuking the people, instead of Moses taking his staff and beating the people, he didn't do none of that. Instead, he fell to his face on the ground before the congregation publicly. He, he, he showed such a degree of humility that we need to take note of that. He didn't have to prove himself to them. He didn't have to argue with them. He didn't have to explain. He didn't have to say nothing. He just fell down to the ground. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jufana, of those who had spied out of the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all of the congregation, the sons of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to spy out is exceedingly good land. If the Lord is pleased with us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us. The land will flow with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord and do not fear the people of the land, for they will be our prey. Their protection has been removed from them. And the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. But the congregation said to stone them with the stones. Look at that. So the, the few leaders of God, they were the ones that were speaking faith. And after they said the right things that was so pleasing to God, the congregation wanted to stone them, kill them. All right. And let's look at what God had to say in Numbers chapter 14 verse 30 surely you shall not come into the land which i swore to settle you except caleb the son of Junah, juna and joshua the son of nun in other words all those people that went around 40 years traveling around and around and around none of them got to go into the promised land only joshua and caleb who also traveled round and round and round got to go in the promised land and the children of israel not the the adults, the ones that originally went from Egypt, God allowed all of them to die off because of their lack and lack of faith. But those who were brought up in the church, those who were brought up with the people of God as children, seeing God providing from their sandals never wore out, their clothes never wore out, they always had food, they always had water, the children who grew up in the midst of trusting God, they, along with Joshua and Caleb, got to see the promised land. I want to emphasize this, is that you have the group who doubted God, and the Bible says without faith in God, it's impossible to please him. We're not going to go into heaven without faith. So you have the people who doubted God. They went through around and around in the desert. Then you just have Joshua and Caleb who went in the same direction with them round and round. They had to go through the same suffering. They had to go through the same hardship. They had to go 40 years round and round in the desert along with all the people who were not going to make it into the promised land. And then God allowed them to see the promised land. What am I saying? That as a Christian, whether you believe or if you're not a Christian and you don't believe, you're going to have to go through the same round and round and round. God's not going to spare you from that. You're going to have to go through trials and situations and, and all that. God's not going to make it easy and let you go on the short road. God's going to give you the long, hard road. Uh, narrow is the way that leads to life. And broad be the way that leads to destruction. You're going to have to go through the same hardship that everyone else is going to have to be. The difference is, is not whether you're going to lead a suffer-free life, not whether you're going to lead a challenge-free life. The difference is when you die, is heaven going to be your home? I pray that you take uh, ears to hear this word and that you believe that your life is not about what's taking place right now, where you're going right now. Your life is about where you're going to go after you die. God bless you and have a wonderful day.